All right, and recording, test, test, test. Good evening, Manhattan, New York City, the world, the universe, America, and beyond. Tonight, we have a special gift and a special interview. Round two, that's right on the Kirk Spiritual TV show with Lisa Larson. And uh, she's an animal communicator. She has clients around the world. If you want to see that interview, you go on right over to YouTube and type in Kirk is a Shaman and Lisa Larson, animal communicator. Who is Lisa Larson? She's got a website at PauseTalk.net. If you want to talk to any of your animals, uh, living or passed on over that rainbow bridge. And uh, I asked Lisa back. Our last interview was about six, eight months ago or something. Right, Lisa? Yeah, yeah seems like. It's uh, kind of time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It goes fast. Uh, during the interview, when we were talking last time, Lisa said she started out reading the tarot before she, the universe, guided her into her real, like, occupation, which is to help humans and animals, right? Yep. And uh, I was just, it stuck in my mind, and I was like, you know, I wrote Lisa an email, and I said, we got to get you back. we got to get you back to talk about the tarot and mediumship. Oh, let's just take a little yoga breath and relax into the energy and, you know, ask that divine spirit and God and goddess and, you know, all the animal helpers on the other side and around and everywhere. Just be present here and give us some kind of love and light. And uh, we'll step into the sacred circle with Lisa Larson about the tarot and mediumship. Boom. Okay. So, uh... Where do you want to start? What's a good starting point? Uh, the tarot, tarot reading, which came first, mediumship or the tarot for you? Oh, for sure, tarot. I've been doing tarot since I was about 16. I, um, I, we had a little vacation house, and, and I remember one of my dad's friends brought his daughter down, and she did a reading for me when I was 16 years old and I just thought oh man this is this the greatest thing ever <laughs> so I came home and I bought myself a deck of cards and it took me you know it was interesting it took me about five years to really start reading them because I would play around with them and then I would go and I would every, every time I'd throw something I would pick up a book and I would go looking for the for the uh interpretation but when you do that when you're looking when you're learn, trying to look you can't learn that way you know so I took a I took a class and it wasn't until I took a class about five years in that I started realizing you have to yes you have to understand the basics of the card but you have to you have to not rely on those things. You have not have to not rely on a book or or on somebody else's interpretation. You need to understand the the basic, um, you know, the the suits and stuff like that. But then it's it's what you do with it. It's it's what you interpret from those cards for each reading. And I love the tarot because it really gets you into symbolism which when I teach mediumship, when I teach animal communication, I always suggest learn to read the tarot because it gets you into a space of thinking symbolically. And I'm also a shaman. You know, I'm, I'm an, a, an ordained alakai, which is in the Huna tradition. Um, the Huna is a, um, uh, a Hawaiian philosophy. And, uh, and again, very symbolic and, and dream work and stuff like that. So I, I just feel like if you have a basis in Tarot, you can stay in Tarot or you, you, it, it allows you to expand in so many other of these areas. Okay, so uh, Tarot is a good liftoff, right? Because it kind of eases mm -hmm. you in. You've got... Uh, you, man, you've got uh, Jewish, Christian, alchemical, uh, you've got astrology, zodiac, mysticism, numerology. I mean, I do say this because, you know, uh, the tarot really is the one esoteric system that really contains all the other esoteric systems. It really does. 
Yeah, I mean, and and that's a nice thing about it. I mean, you can take any of those other systems and you can learn the tarot through those systems. And it might be, you know, you might read it a different way than somebody else that reads it through a different system, but it's still all, all going to apply. You know, I mean, I know just a little bit about astrology. I happen to use numerology in tarot a lot, but I don't use astrology as much as other people. I don't use... Um, um, uh, Kabbalah as much as other people do but you know it, it kind of opens up all of these systems kind of open up different areas of the tarot and, and allow you to you know read it through through a different path you know all right. Yes. Uh, okay so we've got some Freudian in there and we've got some uh, Jungian archetypes and uh, we've got uh, we've got a lower arcana, a higher arcana, and to me, you know, the higher arcana is basically everybody's life is the same story, right? I mean, uh, we're on the uh, journey of the fool, the journey of the hero. Uh huh. So. We we all have our life lessons. I look at it as that we we all have our life lessons, and we all go through. Yeah, we all kind of go through universal life lessons that that, that the major arcana um, represents. Okay, and there's kind of like higher arcana means hidden knowledge, esoteric knowledge. And I think of it as higher spiritual lessons. Yeah, esoteric esoteric knowledge. So when I get a when I get a, a reading with a, a lot of major arcana in it, I think that you know this is a reading about somebody having to learn things on a higher level. You know, there's something changing in their life on a higher level than um, you know just their job or just you know just their relationship or just their job they're they're whatever they're going through in in their physical world minor arcana type of things it's they're they're on a they're on a path to be learning things in a more spiritual way if they choose to of course we all have free will all right, so we learn one lesson as a course base idea, then it gets streamlined, then we learn it again, then we learn it again, then we get a higher and higher, right? Till you... Yeah, okay. and then we can circle back around. <laughs> right, so we go up to... So sorry. It's okay. We go up to a complete streamlining, refinement, high vibration on that lesson, we get up to a purification, uh, we get up to the world, then we start with the innocence, and we round out with, we're innocent, but we have the accrued wisdom. Uh-huh. Is that about? Yeah. Th I think that's about right? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I first, you know, want to also lay a foundation for anybody that hasn't seen the other interview for you. Uh, shucks. You studied something like that a genius studies that nobody studied, right? What was that? Before and I, then, you're also a musical genius, too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I would say a musical genius. I, I graduated uh, Guitar Institute of Technology, which is now Musicians Institute of Technology. It's one of the... I, well, I consider it mo one of the most prestigious music school, music schools in the country. Um, it, you you pick a you pick an instrument and you go and you study that nothing more. Um, but what I loved so much about it, and I don't remember talking about this last time, but what I loved so much about it was that the teachers there were incredibly spiritual. So we weren't just learning. I wasn't just learning guitar, I was learning my spiritual lessons as we went along because, I mean, some of the things that my teachers have, have told me in, in that school, even though I can no longer play, I got injured so I can't play anymore, um, but some of the things that, that I learned from those teachers have uh, changed my life. You know, I got as much spiritually from that from that experience as I did musically. Right. So 
they kind of unveiled some things. They were your first shamans and witches and elders, right? That's kind of what I'm yeah. seeing for you. Okay, and so then uh, you study, you go and you meet some of the gods and goddesses. They teach you things. They open you up. You find the tarot. But then what happens? You go to school. It Was it linguistics? Was it neuroscience? What, what did you do next? So um, after I... After I, that fateful day when the doctor said, you can't play guitar anymore, um, which was a, a, a real, <laughs> a real life-changing thing, um, I ended up doing, I was, for eight years, I was an uh, ultrasonographer, a vascular ultrasonographer, so I worked in a hospital for a long time, and at that time, um, you know, after I did that, interestingly enough, I decided that I wanted to go back to school. I really didn't know, you know, because after I lost music, I was kind of out there. I didn't know what I wanted to do. But after I decided I wanted to go back to school, and when I first started back in school, I happened to get a job reading the Tarot through a psychic line, but it's, it's not like the psychic lines now. You know, the psychic lines now... They, they do it all on commission. Um, people do it from their house. They route the things to your home. And I tried that. I didn't like it at all. Um, this was someplace where you actually went and you got, you got paid an hourly wage. It was a real job. You got paid an hourly wage. So it wasn't your commission was, you know, it wasn't a commission type based thing. Um, and they, they don't have those anymore, unfortunately, because I thought they were a lot more legitimate than, than what they have now. And so I, I read professionally that way, which, you know, anytime you start doing anything over and over and over again, you start really, really getting much so much better at it. But then I went back to school and I decided, you know, I wanted to go back and get my bachelor's and my master's and I kind of fell out of that stuff for a while and I ended up teaching for a long time and um and then I don't know you know 12 years ago or so I um I remember waking up I, I was getting back into reading and um I remember waking up one day and just hearing a voice in my head and it said you're supposed to become a medium and a healer okay I didn't, I didn't even I didn't even at the time really know that much about mediumship I didn't even know that I didn't even know what Reiki was because I'm a Reiki master as well and uh, you hear something that clearly you tend to take notice and so I re that really, really kind of, uh, while I've studied this all of my life, that really, really got me back into it being my life path. And what I came to understand, coming at, bringing it full circle, um, you know, whereas, I, whereas with music, you know, I always thought with music, the, the, the one thing I wanted to do with music was to be able to make other people feel like I felt when I used to listen to really, really good music. Because you know how, like, when you hear that one piece of music and it just... Oh, no. Wait, wait hang uh -oh. on a second. We just... Uh, shucks. I forgot to... Uh, let me go back to... Uh, oh, no. Uh, you still there? I'm there. I see it paused, though. Okay, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Oh, God, it's a tech problem right in the middle. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, phone. Oh, wait. Here, push this. There we go. Okay. Uh, uh, got a pesky text. Okay, let me just straighten you out again. There we go. Uh, I got to tell my people, don't text me. Okay, <laughs> we're good. Because <laughs> the text... Flashed up on the screen. Thank God it wasn't anything. Uh, okay. I'm, you know, this is my first cell phone. I just got it like, I don't know, two months ago. Oh, wow. iPhone? Yeah. Yeah. My family sent it to me. You'll love it. 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 making my thing. Okay, so wait a minute. Let's go back to uh, first of all. I want to uh, touch on the you as a medium, as a musician, before you ever put it together, right? Because let's right. let's kind of toss that out. Uh, <clears throat> you know what? Before uh, I was doing this TV show, I performed on stage spoken word poetry poetry slams and you know the process of writing and getting ready i was reading to row cards but you know it's like this influx of several streams and i realized when i was on stage and i would go and the lights would hit my eyes and i would grab that mic you know that is a form of mediumship as well mm -hmm. yeah it's and it's a form of healing and that's what I was saying you know I mean when I used to play music there you know when when you hear a piece of music that you just went oh god that's so good it touches you right down here you know and I always thought that's you know I mean I know a lot of people get into music be, just because they want fame or whatever you know I wanted to do it because I wanted to make people feel like that and you know you get up on stage and there's nothing you know you, there's nothing like being on stage and, and hearing that applause and when I lost my music when I lost being able to play music it was you know clearly crushing for me but coming full circle and and realizing that I was supposed to be a medium and realize that I was supposed to be an animal communicator and putting all of these things together it's like I I, I, I always kind of jokingly but not so jokingly say that you know when I finish a finish a session I'm I'm hearing one pair of paws at a time or one pair of hands at a time you know I mean because it doesn't for me it now it doesn't have to be a whole room full of people it's still healing I'm still you know clearly having lost my music was the universe's way of saying wait a second it may have taken you a while to figure this out but really you're supposed to be doing it this way you're supposed to be healing and helping and assisting people in this way on a on a on a more spiritual level i mean because you know music can can get you so far but this this takes it to a, in a different direction that I never thought, you know, whereas, whereas uh, music, you know, obviously, you know, I, 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 it was all about sound, but when I started doing this, I realized, you know, when I think back about music, some of the most important things in music are the silences in between, and now everything that I do is in complete silence. And it's, and it's really an interesting yin and yang thing to look at of, of how, you know, it, it, it's, it's all about healing. It's all about assisting. It's all about doing what the universe is, is you know, following the path that the universe has set out for you. And, and, you know, hearing that voice in my head, you know, you're supposed to be doing this. It's like, okay. And I even, I even at one point had a reading with John Edward and after that reading I realized you know oh he made a comment I told I told him that comment about um, you know that I heard in my head you're supposed to be a medium and he said oh so you were kind of anointed by the mafia you know he kind of like this is this is the way that it's supposed to be and but you know I mean with my animal communication I, w I was sitting there going well why am I why am I doing so much animal communication if I'm supposed to be doing that and I and I realized with my mediumship you know I'm I'm a person that I want to do everything well that's 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 my goal you know and what I realize is that there are many many times when an animal will bring through people and in a way that, that they wouldn't have come through before. And I want to be able, and, and I realize that's one of the reasons I'm supposed to be doing mediumship. I, if you'll allow me just a moment more, I had one, one client that I was doing. I believe I was talking to an animal in spirit. She knew that, that, that I could talk to an animal in spirit. But before that dog would let me talk to him, he brought her parents through. And she had no clue 
that anybody could talk to her parents on the other side. And I'm a firm belief that the universe sends me the people that they send me for a reason. Exactly. You know? Right, right. She didn't just go to a medium. She didn't just go to an animal communicator that doesn't know how to do mediumship. She went to a person who was also a medium who popped over and said, okay, I'm going to stop this now and I'm going to go over because obviously she needs to hear from her parents. And she wrote me an email the, day, the next day just it, gushing, saying, you know, I just... You know, of course, she was all crying and everything while I was doing it. I, I kind of joke and say I'm in the only profession that if I make people cry, I'm doing my job well, you know. Um, but she was going, I, it was just so meaningful to hear from my parents that I needed that, but I never knew it was possible. And so I believe that many times the animals bring these people through in a way that they need to be you know, for, for people that need to hear from them. All right. Uh, yeah, a couple of things. First of all, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I always implicitly knew since I was a kid, if the universe brings you somebody, you're supposed to step aside almost, right? Uh -huh. I mean, whatever they need. Mine has been, I don't know if it's a gift, but I, you know, this is my best... Uh, uh, best handicapping, I guess, for past lives, my best pitch for past lives that they exist is that people came to me and told me stuff all the time and I didn't bat an eye. I mean, adults without judgment and, you know, I just allowed them to somehow atone and huh. and cleanse themselves. And, you know, how does a, a 10-year-old, 15-year-old, you know, know how to do that? Uh -huh. Like, just become that projection board and and absolve them that's the word i'm looking for well and don't you find that as healers you know many people in this in this profession or many people that are in the profession for the right reasons because there are some people that are in the profession for the wrong reasons but many people that are in this profession for the right reasons they're the, t they're the type of people that people just naturally open up to you know i mean i remember long ago when you when you had to make plane reservations by calling someone and so on the internet i mean i was calling and making plane reservations and you know all I was doing was, you know, flying a two-hour two flight, and I, an hour and a half later, I knew about this woman's divorce, her child that she had lost, everything about her life, you know? I mean, it's like, I think people instinctively feel that in us, and, and there's a trust factor that that many times people understand, even if they don't know who we are, what we are, they understand through the energetic connection that, that that we're safe to talk to. Right. There is, you know, a sacredness. Uh, I, there's just an automatic implied trust. I don't know how that happens. Because mm -hmm. I don't really and, consider you know, my... I don't look in the mirror and go like, Kirk, you're such a trustworthy person. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, I really do not... That's not the first adjectives that come to my mind. But, uh, you know, when, when it goes down and somebody... Like, all of a sudden, that heart chakra opens up, and you know they need to release this stuff. I don't even know how I know how to do it half the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's it's the path, you know? It's the path that you're supposed to be taking. And, you know, and, and, and that's what I like so much going back to the tarot. That's what I like so much about the tarot is that it gives you this, like, physical thing that you can kind of have a relationship with you know it it, it it allows you to have a relationship with the cards with each of the individual cards with the deck things that you can take like I remember when I was first learning to read every single night I would just you know, throw a three, three or four court card spread or just a one card, you know, I mean, what do I need? And it's, it's this, it truly is this idea of having a relationship and you're not only having a relationship with the cards, it's teaching you to have a relationship with the process. It's teaching you to have a relationship with the metaphysical concepts and ideas. Okay, real quick, anybody that doesn't know what the Tarot is, 
you hate it, you love it, you have your own personal guru, psychic, uh, shaman, medium. Basically, it's, uh, it's broken up into elements or suits, and you've got water, which represents emotions and femininity to a general degree. Then we've got pentacles, which are earth and uh, more earth identified. Okay, here we go. And masculine types of things. Then we've got uh, wands, which are sexuality, creativity, and fire. So uh, there we go. Okay, there's the knight or prince, some say, of wands. And then we have, uh, what else? Uh, air, which is the quality uh, symbolized by swords. That's uh, the ace of swords in the background. Uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, that, I it on the full screen. that uh, represents the intellect. It represents ideas, uh, an idea whose time has come. It represents brain power, uh, and it represents... Uh, the element of air. So when you see the magician or the mage, maybe in the Crowley deck, uh, he's got all of the elements on his table. There you go. Okay. Uh, pull it back just a little bit first, Lisa. There we go. Okay. Yep. You see the, there he's got the cups, the pentacles, He's got the swords and the baton. So, and he's surrounded by innocence in the beginning with the white flowers. I can't remember. And, you know, it's a sunny day. Uh, he or she, you know, it, it really is kind of a unisex magician, I guess. And also got the a symbol of infinity. And, you know, the way the arms are pointed is connection to heaven and earth. There, you're always, you know, you don't always... When people call me and they're like, I want to talk to my relatives, I'm like, talk to them. They can hear you. Uh -huh. You know, I say, you don't need me, but uh, I don't really do that type of uh, past relatives type of thing. When people contact me for that and say, I want to do that specifically, I say, you know, there's other people that do that better than me. I don't, my gift is not the hottest or the warmest. A lot of times a relative will come through in a specific tarot reading or just uh -huh. a mediumship, uh, general healing art session. But uh, if they come through, then I'll do it. But I never tell the client, I don't, on my website, I don't say, I'm going to connect you to your relatives because that's what, that's not my main source feed. You know, so, I, you know, I think it takes a while to streamline and understand the gift, learn how the gift works for you, and then learn what is the most germane to you as a healer. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of times people will hire me for a tarot reading, I throw three cards, and then it goes into a shamanic thing, it's and you know, I didn't really even give them a proper reading. It's a jumping off point. Right, right. I, You know, I did have a client, and she was like, at the end of it, I was like, you just got a $500 shamanic healing. And she was like, I wanted a Tarot reading. <laughs> and I was like, I, okay, you know, I don't know. You got to play the part. You got to, you know, they need props. A lot of times people need the prop. Uh, you know, give me your hand. I'll look at it. Here's the card. I think those are very helpful. Uh, you know, but sometimes it just, their higher self tells you that they need something more than what they think they want. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, you think you know what the session is going to be like? You know, a lot of times, like, a client will contact me. I get the entire reading, reading one email from them. I know. I know. And yeah. then other times, I don't get anything. Then I get in front of them, cam to cam. I barely get anything. And then a week later, I get the entire reading. Has that, uh -huh. has that happened to you? So now I just tell clients, you know, it's kind of like, why am I paying you $300 an hour? Well, there's kind of like three weeks in it. Like, that's, a, that's another thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just, you know, that reading starts when I get that email and they make a donation, which is really saying, I want to be read. You know what I mean? I'm allowing you. 
Yeah, and and I think that's a good point. I think one of the things that's 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 very important is the idea of of being open to the process. And you know, maybe this is a good time to you know tell people for those who really don't know about tarot or, or any of these things. It's you know one of the best things. You know, let me step back for a second. The the. The sitter or the querent, what we call the sitter or the querent, is the person that we're reading for. And that sitter, they don't understand, I think some of them don't understand how big of a role they play in getting a good reading. So, you know, when I do a mediumship reading, I always make sure to tell people, well, don't, you know, don't ask your relatives ahead of time, well, you know, um, tell me, you know, what you said on your deathbed, and then I'll know that it, that it's, it's really you, or tell, you know, bring up this particular thing, because then I know it's really you, because when they do that, when, when you have a, a very focused thing that you want, what it ends up doing is testing the person that you were, that's reading you, and it's closing off the energy, so that's actually the best way to get the worst reading, you know, um, and I'll give you an example in, in terms of, of an animal reading that I was doing one time. Uh, I had a, a, a husband and wife come, came over, and they had lost their cat. And for the first five or ten minutes, I was just getting no, 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 no. I mean, nothing, she was saying nothing was hitting. And so I finally, I realized, you know, and this is different after, after you know, experience leads you to understand that, that, that this might be happening. I asked her, is there something specific you're waiting for? And she said, well, yes, I want to know, I think it was, you know, how he died or, or something like that. I don't remember exactly. And I said, okay, here's the deal. You need to let me do my job. You know, you need to yes, let, yes, <laughs> yes, you need to let yes. go of whatever it is that you're focused on wanting to hear. And as I was saying this, her husband was going, yes, 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 because she was feeling guilty, which already guilt is a very constricting energy, which again, shuts down the reading. So fortunately, she was very, very good at it. You know, the minute I told her that, she, she let it all go. I said, you know, just let me do my job and open yourself up to the process. Because the thing is, what you want to hear may not be what spirit wants to tell you. Maybe spirit has something different that is more important to them or animal or whatever. And the minute she did that, the reading just flew. We just went boom, 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 boom. And, she, you know, she was crying. The tissues were flying. And, and afterwards, I got up and I hugged her and I said, see what happens when you let go? So it's all about letting the person, picking a person that you feel that you can trust using your intuition and saying, I'm choosing this person for a reason because I feel an, a connection. I feel that this is the right person for me. And then be willing to let them do their job, be open to the process, and don't try to control the reading because the more you try to control the reading, the more you shut down the energy and the worse the reading is going to be. Okay, here's a couple of things. You know, if I, if I get the such a powerful one or two paragraph in an email for an inquiry and I feel the whole reading, I don't screen the client at that point. But you don't what? I don't screen the client. Mm -hmm. But I have really started to screen the clients and say, uh, number one, have you had a reading before? Do you know what you're into? Why are you uh, actually contacting me? What mm -hmm. makes you think I'm your healer? So, you know, you're really trying to streamline the situation to really make the most of their time with you. You know, they've got 45 minutes with you face to face. So what you're trying to do is get all of that, like a lot of the groundwork clear. And another thing is, uh, are they going to let you get in there to read? 
Mm -hmm, because sometimes it gets really personal. Sometimes you get, I mean, there have been times that I've done tarot readings, well, any type of reading, really, and, you know, I see things that are really, really, really personal that they may have never told anybody, you know, I mean, I remember one reading when I was on the psychic line, you know, this woman who was being beaten up by her boyfriend, and she, you know, and I saw that, I asked her, you know, I mean, you know, gently, and she just said, I, nobody's, I've never told that to anybody, you know, so of course, you know, I gave her, you know, some numbers to call and stuff, but sometimes you can get into some really, really serious things that they have to be open to as well, and, and let me make one other point, is that there are different types of readers, too, you know, I mean, when I, you know, but when somebody calls me for a Toro reading, what I do is I make sure that I explain my process very, very well and, under, and so that they understand that I'm not going to be telling them their future. You know, I'm not a predictive reader. I use the Tarot as a tool of self-improvement and self-reflection. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to look at the things that are, that, that are going on in their lives, the things that are going on in their subconscious that maybe they aren't aware of, and, and see the blocks that they are, are creating for themselves. So in other words, you know, if I see something and it, and it, and it looks like it's going in a particular direction, I'm going to give that to them and I'm going to say, look, if you want this to happen, this is what you need to do to make it happen. Because it's not going to be happening just because I say it's going to happen. I may see it, but you need to create it. Because we create our own realities. And we have free will. If it's not what you want to happen, then this is what you have to change to, to change it into a different direction. So I use the Tarot to help them look at what their blocks are, what, what's holding them back, and what, what their potential is that, that they may not be seeing or be willing to look at so that they can create the life that they want. But I'm very, very clear at saying, if somebody comes to me and says, you know, well, I want to know if my boyfriend and I are going to get back together. You know what? I'm probably not the reader for you. You know, I'm not going to tell you that. Because by the time, by the time I see, you know, I could say, I could say, oh, you're, you're going to meet the love of your life in three days in a cafe. And that's how the energy stands right at this very moment. But maybe tomorrow something changes because everybody has free will. Something changes. He steps off a curb, gets hit by a car, and then he's in the hospital in three days while you're in the cafe sitting around waiting for him. Right. Right, right. Here's a couple of things, his feedback. You know, uh, here's why I, it pays to go to a seasoned reader like you and I, you know, because the prep and, the, you know, the screening of the client, if the client is not, oh, here goes that damn text again. Oh, okay, there it goes. Sorry. Uh, if the... Uh, the client says, I really want this reading. I really want this reading. And then I tell him, look, if I were a dentist and you came to me and said, fix my cavity, but you wouldn't open your mouth, I wouldn't be able to do it. So yeah. you, you know, they think that you just a lot of times, well, you just turn the camera on and you know every single thing and you know everything. And I'm like, yeah. no, you are not. It's like a book. It's like a channel. You have to let me see some things. So I have to, you have to really kind of establish, oh, for the love of Pete. This is my family. Uh, dang. I, I don't know how to, I don't want to lift the phone and like, you know, please excuse my, my texting. Oh, I can't believe this. Okay, wait a second. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to lift you up. Uh, my family knew I was in an interview, too. Uh, I'm in an interview. You're watching it. I, ver I apologize. Uh, Epstein's 
technology. Yeah, I'm in an interview. Stop texting me. <laughs> uh, there you go. Now, please. Uh, I don't know how to do the... How do you do the do not disturb? Oh, I found a do not disturb. Okay. All right. Uh, let me go back to you. Hey, I got you right back. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Let's just... So, there we go. You're like floating like a genie on the camera here yeah. right now. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, uh, screening the client and you have to make... See, okay. This is what I think what I, I'm working out. The client has to be accountable as well. They're part of the process. This is what you're saying. The client's yeah. energy. You're bringing something. And you know what? If you're running an inference on me, I'm like, look... You are spending two hundred to three hundred dollars an hour, and now you're not going to let me read for you because you've exactly. got this kind of like up and down, up and down. I want you to see it. I don't want you to see it. Uh -huh. And sometimes I'm not going to say I have to push people around, but you really do. It's almost like a waiter, a bartender, a service. You have to let me do this. Like if you don't uh -huh. allow me to wait on you, or you know. You've hired me to do this, so you need to back it up and get out of my... I, I love it when the, you get a client and they try to read your aura. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? And they're like all over your aura and your heart chakra, and you're like, no. No, no, I, you, I'm reading you. You're not going to read me. You're not going to get into my, you know, we're keeping the focus on you. Like when they right. get uncomfortable sometimes... So, you know, this is once again, a seasoned reader is learned all these things and is a lot more adept at having a smoother reading, knowing when to, uh, inter how to interpret. You don't just say, hey, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions out there. I know you're on that website where we met initially, which was, uh, shucks, what was the name where you answer questions? Quorum. Quorum. Cora. Cora. You know, where people ask about uh, certain questions about mediumship, and uh, now I've, I lost my train of thought. Shucks. Um, well, it's, yeah, you were saying about, you know, the process and, and, and them being part of it, you know? That their energy is basically accountable. Uh, a lot of times uh, they might disappear and they're not present all of a sudden, so then you gotta pull them back. And, you know, I use a magic wand. I'm actually pretty theatrical, too. You know, um, you know, I might wear a little mascara if I think it's appropriate, like they want it more of a show, because that's what's gonna get them to open up a little bit, a little extra jewelry, uh, candles, I think. Uh, oh, here's what I wanted to say as well. You know, a lot of my reading is because the psychic stuff is the easy part, really. That's the hard part is kind of like the logistics of setting the stuff up and the website. But it's also, um, I find, making the client relaxed and comfortable. And knowing how to deal with the client and, know, and understand. You were talking about the seasoned reader is what you were actually talking about there. And, you know, that's so true. You know, I have... Um, when I was very, very first learning to be a medium, and I was just kind of putting it out there, asking people, you know, send me people and I'll just do them for free because I just want the practice. And there was one woman who came to me, and um, again, this is kind of going back to that thing where she had a she had a focus of what she wanted, but I wasn't seasoned at that point. But then I, again, I wasn't, you know charging her money either you know she knew that but I you know oh my god this reading was grueling it was an hour and a half and and I kept getting kept getting stuff and it was just like no 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 and at one point I was you know I had gotten and I felt like I was very well connected and I, I told her I said okay I'm getting somebody with four kids three are the same one is different like either one is dead and three are alive or there's three girls and one boy and she's like no 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 okay all right we move on um i'm also getting an s name like sharon or 
Susie, or it's, I could be off by the name, but not by the initial. And no, no, no. And just this just went on and on. And afterwards, I asked her. I said, "Well, what is it that you were wanting to? You know, what is it that you wanted from this reading?" Again, as a as a seasoned reader, I wouldn't have gone through the whole thing. Now I know to ask earlier on, you know. And uh, and she said, "Well, you know, I wanted to hear what my my son said to me on his deathbed." And I'm like. You know, and then she she said, she said, well, you know, I I we've been through so much because my son died a year ago. I have three other daughters, and his sister Suzanne was very very close to him, and she's having a really really hard time of it. I just went, really. Uh catch any of that you know so it's like it's that perfect example of you know she missed all of that because she just wasn't hearing what she wanted but that you know again that was on me as well because you know I was just learning and when you're talking about going to a seasoned reader a seasoned reader part of being a seasoned reader is knowing how to Give the information so that they don't shut down. So they, you know? right, right, yes, so they can hear it. So they can hear it. So in other words, you know, like it's, it's <coughs> I remember when I was studying with Lisa Williams, um, she, we were, I was practicing with, with one of the other students and she said, uh, she said to me, um, well, I have your sister here. And I said, no, you don't. because, you know, I don't have a sister. I know I don't have a sister. Well, what it ended up being is she was bringing through one of my best friends who had passed from breast cancer sometime before. And, you know, and I I told her at that point, you know, because I was actually, I had been doing this professionally for a little while first. And I told her that's one of the things is when instead of boxing them in like that, you want to say, I've got a sister figure here. Because when we connect in that way, yes, when I think about it, she was very much like a sister to me. But if somebody says sister, I'm going to think biologically. Right, okay, yeah. A sister figure, it opens them up to say a sister figure. Who do I consider my sister? You know, it's, okay, seasoned reader has taught me to say when you really... This is why I actually have a magic wand. I have this sparkly liquid magic wand, and I uh-huh. use it because it's very instructive, and I point to the card a lot of times, and I'm like, you're not Bye. hearing what I'm saying. Uh, uh-huh. If you can't hear this, we're going to put it down for a minute, and we're going to go back to it, and then I tap it again. But I'm going to give you a story briefly that's illustrative of when I was a new reader, And I went to this person's house, which I don't really do anymore. And I almost never see people in person anymore. But I go to this guy's house and I get my cards and I'm trying to attune. And uh, I tell this guy, you know, there's somebody else's energy that is all over this apartment. There's somebody else's energy. It's like almost everywhere. It's like almost your energy isn't even in here. Uh, do you know who that could be? He looks at me, blank stare. No, I don't have any idea. No, there's no such thing like that. There's nobody else's energy in here. And I was just, I was so definite. I was still a newbie, but I was so definite that I was like, you know what? I am not giving this up. There is somebody else's energy in here, and it is very strong. And so finally, after, I don't know, 20 minutes of trying to like, you know, and I'm getting all nervous. I feel invalidated. I'm like, I'm blowing it. The guy goes, well, you know, this guy like on another floor in this building died and he gave me all his furniture and like all of his stuff is all over the place. I mean, is it that? And I was like, are you kidding me? Are you, you know, like I sleep in this dead guy's bed and, you know, you've got a medium here saying, there's, you know, your energy's what? not, this actually it's really. Like amnesia, you know, and, and the thing is, just so that nobody thinks that, that we're kind of ragging on them, is that we do it too when we get red. Right, you know? right, yeah, no. I it, it, amnesia, when I've been. 
been read. You know, sometimes you just, you get off on something and you just don't realize. And yes, that goes back to the seasoned reader because with a seasoned reader, you start to, having had those experiences, you start to be able to know and, and recognize the questions. If they're saying no and it's, it's, and it's like it's that strong, then you start to be able to understand, okay, well, wait a second, I have to step back here, I have to really look at what I'm seeing, and what are all the ways that I can present this to them so that they may understand this, because there's something here, I know it, but they're looking at it in one way, and I'm looking at it in another way, and somewhere, you know, it's it's just a matter, sometimes it's a matter of semantics, sometimes it's a matter of the way that you're presenting it or like a you know it could be just the tiniest little thing you know that you start asking well did somebody used to live here did somebody die here did somebody right. were you were okay your best friend, you know I started to panic and I was just like <laughs> yeah I got referred by a very heavy person, and I was like, he's going to call this guy and go, this guy didn't get anything. In fact, he lied. He got all this misinformation. So I started to panic. So a lot of being a mature reader and having, you know, I also tell people this, you know, just because somebody can read tarot cards and they're a medium doesn't mean they're qualified to give you spiritual advisement. You bet. This is you another bet. thing. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm pushing towards sixty now. If and I've, you know, my psych first psychic teacher was like, you're living uh, nine, ten lifetimes in this lifetime already. So you are quali- You've already, you know, you have the wisdom at least ten people in this lifetime. So that's another thing with choosing your reader and you know the person where you see wherever. You know, ask yourself that. They're not just reading yeah. cards. They're not just being a medium, but they're, they're you know, putting together the, tri- the golden trifecta of wisdom. They're trying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, who are they? I mean, there's, there's, there's a one specific medium that I know that I have taken a class with that, oh, man, you know, this person just has... You know, he might be good in getting the information, but he has absolutely no business doing this this work. You know, and th- and that's it. You know, because you have if you're if you haven't done the work on yourself, so that you can you know so that you can understand how to work with people because we're working with people who are having real problems. You know, in real grief. Um, you know that that we. I, I don't think you know. I think a lot of times people think that you know this is just fun and games. But this, you know, I take my job very very seriously. And just like that that woman, you know that that you know I just said about her son. You know, a couple of months after that, I heard from the person who had referred me that you know she went by you know went back and and you know all the stuff. She said yes, 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 yes to, you know, she didn't tell me, but she, she affirmed it for, you know, said that, that it was all accurate, you know, I mean, but, but, you know, and, and I'm not criticizing her in, in any way, you know, because I, you know, I was not seasoned and she was in grief. That's the thing, you know, I mean, if, 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 if people can, if people do this work, but they don't have social skills, they don't know how to deal with people in grief, in, in you know, when well, they're having certain ta- problems, it's, it's really, it can be really devastating for them. You're talking about really, you know, we've got, I just want to give you the heads up here. We've kind of been talking for about an hour, we got about 15 minutes left, just so... Okay. Just to let you know, um, you're talking about being somebody's a soul counselor. You're talking about really being a therapist. Now you're going into being a therapist. Uh huh. You know, uh, masters in human behavior, and as I said, I'm an, an ordained alakai, which is a spiritual healer, teacher, counselor. Um, you know, which is legitimized, and and you know, and and not that. Not that there aren't people that are qualified, but that's one of the reasons why I've done that, you know, because because it's it's important for me to know that, that my clients know that I also have that background. 
Right, right. You're getting into more of a shamanic energy dimension, moving around uh, vibrational healing. After you see the situation, you know. Now, wait. Do you? I wanna. I want you to show us some of the tarot cards, but let's just go loud and one last line of topics. You know, you're getting into the realm of you see the situation. Here is the thing. You've got it before you. Not all psychics are really healers, if you want my opinion. Uh -huh. Like, I've tried to sort this out and talk about it in my 300 hours of YouTube vids. It's like, uh, you know what? All healers are psychic, but not all psychics are healers. All mediums, I don't know if they're psychic. or they're, All shamans all, are mediums. Yeah, uh -huh. all, all mediums are psychics, but not all psychics are mediums. And all animal communicators are pet psychics, but not all pet psychics are animal communicators. You, you know, so you're definitely, and I tell this to people too, I mean, I, once again, I'm going to reiterate what you said. In order to be a better reader or a better artist, you kind of do have to be a better person and want to work on yourself. You can't just be like, hey, I'm just a projection board. I'm just reading the cards. Here's what it says. You do have to have some finesse. My, stre my strength and my weakness is almost the exact same because I'm so blunt. You know, uh, yeah. I just take the truth and I just go boom, like, but, and that can be a weakness and some people aren't really prepared for that. That's why I ask them, like, how do you know me? Where have you seen me? At the same time... If I'm that blunt with them, they, like, instantly open up. Like, this guy has really heard it all. He is right to the chase. I'm like, these are minutes of your life. Well, and I, and I believe that most of the people that come to you, they are, they are universally drawn to you because that's the type of reader they need. This is exactly. Once it's it, just like, you know, when people come to me, you know, I, you know, I mean, when I had that reading from John Edward, it was, you know, it was a great reading, and, um, you know, because he's just my favorite medium, uh, and, and I've learned so much by watching him, but I, it made me realize the difference between my style and his, you know, until I was read by him, I was thinking, oh, well, because I've learned so much by watching him, maybe my style is kind of like him, but I realized my style is not like him, at, you know, pretty much at all. I mean, I may do some similar things, but, but you know, just have, having watched him, but he's, he's very blunt and he's very to the point, and, and not that I'm not blunt, but I, I am so emotional that once I get something, I'm not, I don't just give it and then move on to other things, which is fine, you know. But my style is, I'm going to go in and I'm going to let them talk about things. You know, I'm going to look at it on an emotional level more so that they can, so that they can look at things. And then I realized that, you know, after that reading, I realized, well, that's why the people that find me find me. The people that find him or people that read like him or people that read like you, that's why they find you. Because every, you know, it's not that, you know, one person is better than the other or, or you know I, 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 I mean obviously John Edward is you know better than most people I think you know um, but, but when it comes down to it it's not so much that it's better you know they're a better reader or you know what their skills are it's who's better for that person because each individual person is going to react differently um, to each style of each reader oh excuse me okay that was a cat incident okay <laughs> he almost knocked over the light <laughs> we don't mind the cat the cat must be getting tired and the cat's yeah the cat's giving energy too i you know i tell my client i get people unstuck if you've got something that is so frozen i have got energy to burn in about seven different dimensions i'm your guy hey guess what if you need a root canal you know what? It's not going to feel good. I'm sorry. And I try to, you know, I'm the no bullshit reader. And I say that on YouTube. And uh, there's 20 hours of me saying that. You want the no BS guy? You know, I'm sorry to have to tell you, you want a little pain now or you want a lot of pain later. This right. is uh, this is me. Okay, this is uh -huh. what you're going to get with me. I'm trying to save you the lot of pain later. 
Okay, and I'm, I still don't have a judgment on you. And I, it's all about just, it's all about educating our, our clients before they come to us, you know? I mean, and that's, you know, I don't know how many times I've said to people, you know, this is how I read, and if I hear any kind of hesitation in their voice at all, I say, look, you know what? Think about it. I want, you know, I don't want, I could easily take your money, but I don't want to do that unless I know that you feel that you're comfortable with me. You know, you are the one that needs to look at your intuition and see if you're comfortable, you know, go look at my website, go, you know, if you want, want, want to ask more questions, that's fine. But the bottom line is don't don't hit that submit button for, on my site until until you know that, that you're comfortable that I'm the reader for you. And, and I'm fine with that. And if they go someplace else, I just have I just figure that that's that's, you know, the universe that another reader is probably better for them. But that's why I do it, because it makes it makes everybody's life easier. I don't want to take money from somebody and have them, you know, go off, you know, finish finish the session and say that they didn't, that, that you know, they no, were unhappy. No, I... There, there we saw the kitty. <laughs> the kitty's still there? No, he, daddy took him. <laughs> I would rather just give the people their money back. I'd, yeah, I yeah. would I mean, absolutely. It's, it's rare, but I, if that's the case, hey, I, yeah, I would too. I would just rather give you your money back and say, because you know what, I don't want more than the money, or I need, you know, we need to keep our lights on. But at the same time, I don't want a list of clients that are it's like, oh, I'm unhappy. Unhappy. I don't, so you know, I don't I want the money. Why, yeah, I think that's why you and I kind of get along because we have that same kind of work ethic. You know, I want I want people to get value out of their reading. I want people to be happy. And, and you know, I mean, most of my business is, knock on wood, word of mouth. I don't, I don't advertise, you know, um, because, and, you know, if I give them, a, you know, a few extra minutes, that's no skin off my nose, you know. I mean, does it always happen? No, but... If it, it, if it needs to happen, I'm not going to, you know, I mean, there are other people that I know that, you know, they go, it's a 60 minute session and then it's a dollar 99 per minute every pat you know, every minute passes like, oh, please, you know, I mean, that does nothing to create trust between me and my client, right. you know, I'm here to trust, I'm here to do a job, I'm here to help you and, and what that, whatever that takes, you know, I, I mean, obviously within reason I'm not going you know I don't want to let people take advantage of me and some people will try to do that you know there's no question some people will try to do that but you know I'm never I'm, I don't I don't go in with the idea that that, that 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 people are going to because and I feel that most most don't you know they, they appreciate what I give them because I'm giving it with the best intentions and um, you know, it's 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 about ethics. It's kind of what we've been talking about here. You know, I mean, even the difference between, you know, we can talk about the difference between seasoned readers and and beginners, and we also can talk about the difference between ethical readers and people who are just in it for the money. Right, right. You know? So it's 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 all um, it's all who you are, how you run your business. And and what you want to do, you know, I, I, the reason that you're in it, and and for me, you know, I want I want my people to be happy. I want them to find value in it. I want to get off the phone and and hear them say, you know, that that was that really helped. Right. Well, you know, we need to one, start one pair of hands or one pair of paws talking at a time. We Probably need to uh, we need to start wrapping it up because they're okay. the studio is going to close in about seven minutes. Um, I couldn't agree more, you know, because I'm going to tell you, uh, when you, when the client gets a healing and you shut the camera off, you got healed too. Uh -huh. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And Most so definitely. when you get energy, when you're given the, and it's a good, you screen the client right, the universe, you know you're supposed to spend time with that client. Then you walk away and you got healed and you learned as well. So you expanded. You didn't. Uh huh. But um, Lisa, I and that good energy out to the universe. Right for your own karmic 
whatever. We're, I don't need to make any more bad karma with people. You know what I mean? Like, I do not need any more, trust me, nine lives, you can fill in the blanks. You know what I mean? There's, I'm still cleaning up the mess. Let's get to, uh, did you bring us some cards we're going to have to wrap it up with? Did you, I think you were telling me about these invisible yeah, to low cards, really and I want to... What the deck, uh, you know, I mean, we can talk about the rider way to row until the cows come home, but this deck is called the Transparent to row. It's just the greatest, it's the greatest deck. Transparent to row, I don't know if that's backwards for you or not. No, we can but see But what it. these are is... They're transparent cards. Oh, so God. What they're... you do is you can not only, not only do you lay them down one, two, three, but you lay them down one, two, three this way, and then you kind of create, I don't know, let me see if yeah. I can have a, a white background for no, you No, we can see it. You no, we can see it. A different, you know, you can create a story. And when you start putting them down, like, you know, in a line and then stacking them, and then you start creating, like, a line, a, a, a story, a, a timeline in between, because, you know, you know, all reading is done with intuition. So with these, the way that I use them is it's like when if I if I pick up this one, then I'm gonna want to know, you know, is this you know, does this go this way? Does this go this way? Because we turn it around and then is this gonna is this woman facing that person that's Wow, this is amazing or is, is she facing away. This is amazing. Can you get these Amazon? Where do you go? Yeah. Amazon. Yeah. They're just they're just fabulous. I, I mean they take a little bit of you know work, um, but they it, it opens up a whole new again I'll show you the book. It opens up a whole new realm of how to read. I mean, now if you're just starting to read, I, I highly suggest getting a, a deck like, you know, a, a writer weight deck and this one I particularly like is the, the Pamela Smith deck it's got a really nice back to it and they're nice and thick cards um, and they've they're kind of like an old style color that's but the uh, commemorative uh, I have the book to yeah. it I don't have the cards yeah that is a beautiful it is a gorgeous it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. Deck. and it gives homage to her because she's the one you know that really brought it to life I mean right Right. So, you know, I mean, if you're just learning, and I've got a link, I can send you a link uh, to w one of my websites that has a lot of different cards and a lot of uh, writer rate clones. So if you're just learning, I would suggest you learn, um, you know, you learn on a writer weight clone. You know, you've got, you can have different colors. This is uh, universal. You can see how the colors differ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, the universal is beautiful. If you if you're an experienced reader, then you know you can get something. Excuse me, you can get something like the Druid Craft Tarot, which is a really really interesting deck. Or you can get the you know you can get the Invisible Tarot. You know, um, so you know any of those things. Um, you know, as you if as you learn, here's the Druid Craft. I just one of my favorites. Uh, pull it back just a little bit so we can. Oh yeah, it's it's really really a beautiful beautiful deck. Okay, um, I wanna I wanna uh, I wanna show you something when you watch this interview because I brought this to show you but I can't really I don't think I can show you. Oh wait, maybe I can. Oh yeah, the shaman tarot. Do you know this deck? Because this. I've I've had this deck for about five years, and I can only read with it once because, for me, maybe it's a projection on me. It is so heavy that the stuff that gets channeled when I pull this deck out is like, whoa, I can only acclimate once a year to the, like, magnitude. 
So, you know, Some decks... decks are like that. There's an oracle deck that I have that is like that, this Power Animals ter- uh, oracle deck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That you just, every time I pull a card, it just, it, it's so meaningful. Is that uh, Ted Andrews? Is that a Ted Andrews? Yes, yeah. So, no, Stephen Farmer. St- yeah. I have, uh, I think I had a pack of his cards and they just did not... You know, that's the other thing, like a deck will either take with you or a deck won't take with you. Yeah, and that, of course, is an oracle deck, but, you know, it, there are so many decks that are inspired by the Rider weight. so if you, lo- like I say, if you learn the Rider weight and you like cats, then you can get the ta- cat deck, you can get another cat deck. You can get the mystical cat deck. Of course, can you tell I like cats? Um, you know, you can you can get different colors for the rider deck. This is the radiant. Um, yeah, so there are just so many different kinds that you know. It, 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 you know, go out, start with a rider deck because if you learn a rider deck, um, you you'll be able to read eighty percent of the decks out there. Right. Okay. You know, Learn the symbolism of the Rider deck. You'll be able to read eighty uh, percent of the decks out there. Here's I brought three other decks to show you and our live audience, our our uh, YouTube audience. Uh, here was the one I was telling you about in the interview. If you can see these, uh, this is what are these like? Uh, the albino one. No, this isn't the albino. This is my. I was telling Lisa, my albino is my daily deck, pretty much. But I also do a daily with this. This, these cards are, I think, what six inches, seven inches. Oh, they're, those big ones. What's the back look like? They're humongous. They're a standard right away uh, back. Yeah, right. But I really prefer the, uh, like these things are mucho grande. So if I'm going to read in public, like I could read in Times Square a lot of times. I do readings just for tips, you know. That's my tithe. Uh, Right in Times Square, they have a bunch of tables. So these are really perfect for, like, props, more theatrics. You're on stage or something like that. And then this, I don't pull out that often. Can you see this? Oh, yeah, I have that. I have that. This one is, like, one of my treasured... Uh, it really is one of my true treasures. The illustrations are so beautiful. I'll have to look at that again. I haven't had, I haven't used it very much. Um, you know, of course, we, you know, I have tons of decks, but you only use a, a certain few when you're when right. you're reading. Right. You know, you favor some, but you know that and one's. Of course, I've I mean, got, you know, the, you pulled out the the large deck. I've got one of my favorite, you know, card size, you know, deck, hand size deck. Right, you perform, yeah, well, so they do come in all different sizes, and actually the right away comes in a mini, uh-huh. tiny, I think they're like an inch, maybe. Yeah, they come, this is, this is like, a, almost like a deck of cards, they also come, you know, they come, the right away comes in little, but the, there's another one that's about this size. Right, right, no. Yeah, great for, you know, like I've got, I've got small decks that I just stick in my purse, so I always have a deck in my purse. I prefer bigger, actually. I don't. Everybody's got a different thing. I'm not a size queen, but uh, (laughs) you know. Uh, Okay, my last uh, thing that I wanted to. Oh yeah, I know. You know this one? Love that. The Osho Zen. So this really combines like incredible amounts of wisdom. I mean, I. I, I just I get so much, and it comes at least when I bought it. This thing's like 15 years old now. It came in a case, and the book is also a true treasure. So I wanted to, you know, see if you knew about that. And uh, I have seen that. I, I have a friend that has those, and she just loves that deck. Yeah, I you know, her favorite deck. Each client, like sometimes I put five decks on the table face down, and I tell the client, "You're gonna choose where we're going today." You know, at the beginning, because it gives them kind of a sense of empowerment. You know, like which deck do you want to? And I have another Rider weight that's around twenty years old, and it is old. It's stained. It's fallen apart. Yeah, and I have I, a few of those. <laughs> I show them that deck too, and I'm like, 
You know, it says a lot about, like, sometimes I'll put them in different boxes, choose a box, and the box contains the card. So you try to make that, like, a little mystical also, you know? Yeah, I make my own tarot bags. Oh, nice. Now, if you can see that, I've got, like, a sun on it, uh, kind of there, a little bit. This one's black, so, but I, you know... So, yeah, I like, yeah, you know, there's just so many things with the tarot that um, it's, it's, you have a relationship with them, you know, uh, it's, you, it's, it's a different, it's, it's like having a relationship with a, with a person, you, you have a relationship with the cards in, in a certain way, and they, they become part of your life. No, they're, without a doubt. It's just like a chef and their knives. I mean, you, you know, uh -huh. it really does get your energy. And, you know, the most expensive deck is not going to be the best deck for you. Uh -huh. You know, certain decks get energized with my own personal each card. Like when I see the, f I think it's the four of cups. The, the two kids in the garden on the right of way, uh -huh. you know, the, to me, the minute that card shows up, I'm like, this is a past life with this person. And yeah. you know, I've never really seen like that as a universal meaning, but so, you know, my decks are all programmed for four cups. Hey, you're dealing with a past <laughs> life. I know what to tell the person. So, you know, and that takes 10 or 15 years of like mm -hmm. doing and that. You have, a, you have a relationship with each of the cards that, you know, there's, there's cards that you know, for as long as I've been reading, you know, there's just cards that I just don't have as good a relationship, but then other cards when I, you know, when I pull the strength card, man, I'm, I'm there, you know, I really, I just have a good relationship with that card, you know? You're Leo, right? You're... I am. See? What is that, eight? Is that eight? I the... think so, and I think that might be the one where there are some ducks where they're, it's switched the 8 and the 11 or something. Uh, well, uh, they say, you know, there's a rumor that, uh, uh, right or wait, uh, uh, wait, uh, Arthur wait, Arthur wait, that wait switched him around because he didn't want people to know the right sequence. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I, did. I knew there was something about that, There's but I didn't remember some the Some funky. And I think Crowley, when he made his deck, he switched it back or something. Right, something like that. Well, I guess we sh we'll have to do our homework for next time we talk about this. Okay, we, uh, we need to wrap it up. It was a great interview. It feels about the right time, and they're going to start to shut down the studio uh closing statements shameless plug postdoc.net and what else are your we can find you answering questions about mediumship on quora uh -huh. and uh, i also have my mediumship site is spiritcat.com but the cat has two a's so spirit c-a-a-t and if you want to go look at the tarot decks there that's the site that has those tarot decks Okay, uh, and your animal communication once again, pause talk. Talk dot net. Yeah, everything, everything. I pretty much do everything through pause talk dot net. I mean, I, you can order mediumship readings there. You can order tarot readings there. You can order uh, Huna counseling. You know, and, and that's something that we've not talked about at all. But you know, maybe we'll talk about that hopefully to, in the future. Huna. Okay, so you're uh, officially and formally invited back. Next topic in a couple of months is going to be uh, shamanism, shamans is medium. Uh, so any other closing, uh, shocked in the must thank you for being in the healing circle. Anything else you want to do a closeout? Because uh, that's... No, I just, I just appreciate you inviting me on. I appreciate all of your, your viewers for being here and spending this time with us. And, and I, I appreciate the... I appreciate that this is a conversation. I, I really like doing this with you because it, it, it ends up being a conversation that, that goes into places that um, we were not sure that they were going to go. And, and it goes into places that I think need to be covered. And, and hopefully um, your viewers will find value in it. And uh, I, I welcome the opportunity. So thank you so much. Okay, I'm honored to be in your presence. Uh, powerful healer. And uh, doing a lot of good work with the animals, which always makes me feel good. Uh, Lisa Larson, and she's also on 
Do you, do you uh, contact on Facebook or no? Just. As I'm on plan. Facebook, but I don't. I don't do. I, you know, if you want to contact me, uh, it's better to contact me through my website. My email is pause talker at gmail dot com. P a w s t a l k e r at gmail dot com, and my <laughs> at my website is p pause talk dot net. Right. I'm gonna load all these links in. Uh... Uh, on the YouTube vid as well, and there's no copyright infringement. This, because you know, a lot of times I use music in my show, but this is going to go straight to YouTube in the next uh, 48 hours. All right, uh, Lisa, I'm going to push the button to stop recording this awesome uh, convo of the uh, the East Coast and the West Coast. And uh, hang on a second, let me just. I'd like to thank our viewers for watching. There's over, actually, 300 hours of Spiritual Topics vids. There's also another interview with Lisa Larson on my YouTube page, which I will link in for you as well. And Lisa's links, look for them below here, right on YouTube. There you go. And, uh, okay, Lisa. Uh, Thank you so much. <laughs> this is great. All right. No text next time. I'll tell my families probably. I was like, no text. All right, Lisa, we will talk soon, and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody. Namaste. Okay, thank you. There we go. Okay. Oh, boy, I was sweating those texts out there for a minute. I was like... So I didn't realize you were doing it on your phone. Yes, we had to jockey it on the phone. We had to... Hang on, let me Is shut... Is uh, the problem with Facebook? Yeah, so we just... Yeah, just I don't And, uh, you know, I tried it on all different browsers and, and Google. I don't know what Google. So, I'm honestly, I'm going to start. I'm going to look into do, using Zoom. It was so easy, man. You just give somebody a link. They, they, they go to.